when the team arrive, they'll be in their Diamond 9 trailing off famous red, white and blue. So, Riyadh, please put your hands together for the 2024 Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team. It's the Red Arrow! Team arriving in our world famous Diamond 9 trailing all red, white and blue. And as the team pull up, you can see us in that world famous Diamond 9 with that plan form of the shape with the sun glistening off the aircraft. You see reds 8 and 9 now move left and right, changing the shape to 9 arrow, reaching a height of over 5,500 feet at the top of that loop. Leading the team this year for 2024, we have a new team leader, that's squad leader John Bond, known as Bondi. Bondi had previously been in the team for five years before taking a year out in 2023 and coming back as the team leader this year. He's a former Typhoon pilot and former qualified flying instructor on the Tucano, where he was the Tucano display pilot in 2012. You've now seen six and seven at the back split in from the left. This is Big Vixen. There are actually 11 pilots in the Red Arrows. You have Reds 1 through 9 displaying in front of you today. There's myself, Red 10, former Tornado GR4 pilot, former qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark II. And of course, as a military unit, we are commanded by Wing Commander Adam Collins. He is OC Rafat, former Red 10, former Tornado GR4 pilot, and he also flew the F-111 while on exchange with the Royal Australian Air Force. You now see six and seven move to the centre, and Reds eight and nine join them at the rear. At the beginning of June 2024, we celebrated and commemorated 80 years since Operation Overlord, which of course was the storming of the Normandy beaches by the Allied forces. And tribute to all those that took part and those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, this is Spitfire. On the right of Red 1 is Red 2, that's squad leader Chris McCann. Chris is in his first year on the team and going through training, Chris was taken straight from training into an instructor role on the Tucano. After which he then joined the world famous 617 squadron, the Dam Busters, flying the Tornado GR4. While flying on the Tornado, Chris received an Air Force Cross for his service on operations in Afghanistan. His opposite number on the left-hand side of Red 1 is Red 3, Flight Lieutenant Dustin Wales, known as Dusty. Originally from Zimbabwe, he's a former Typhoon pilot, having flown with 11 Squadron, an instructor on 29 Squadron, and also was part of 41 Squadron, which is the Test and Evaluation Squadron, all based at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire. The smoke is on from Reds 4 and 5, as either side of that centre section makes their way rearwards. And November 2023 marked the 20th anniversary of the final flight of one of the most iconic aircraft ever in aviation history. As the team roll out, there is no mistaking the wonderful and majestic shape of the iconic Concorde. Once again, Red One pulls the team up at over 450 miles per hour, showing the expertise of the pilots looping in formation. To make it even more difficult, you'll now see Reds 8 and 9 move themselves left and right to change the shape from Concorde to Signet. Reaching a height of over 5,500 feet, those aircraft now slowing to only 120 miles per hour, made the controls a lot less responsive. Conversely, the aircraft now accelerating through 200, 300, back to 400 miles per hour before Red 1 brings the team around to the left in Signet. You now see the wings of the Signet start to flex forward. 
with all the team members now looking left and right down their shoulders towards red one with red six and seven splitting at the rear as they continue come round from the left react get your cameras ready for the colorful phoenix In the middle of that right wing uppermost is Red 4. That's Flight Lieutenant Ollie Suckling. Second year on the team, he remained as Red 4 this year and took up the role affectionately known as Uncle Enid. This means he is a mentor, works alongside Red 1 going through winter training to ensure our new pilots each year maintain and attain the standards required of a Red Arrows pilot. All the pilots must have a minimum of 1,000 fast jet hours and be assessed as above average in the air and have one operational tour before they can even apply to join the team. They'll go through a rigorous selection process when we take the number of applicants down to our final three who will join us at the end of the season for the next season. The team now in two distinctive rows as they pull up for the Chevron roll. On that front row, on the far left-hand side, is Red 5. That's Flight Lieutenant George Hobday. George is in his first year on the team. He's a former Typhoon pilot, having flown with 11 Squadron based at RAF Coningsby. And George has also taken part in operations over Syria and Iraq, as well as the Eastern European Air Policing Patrol in the face of the aggressive Russia. As I said, there are 11 pilots in the team, but the Red Arrows is not just about the pilots. We have a team of over 140 personnel. 120 of them are the engineers, the mechanics, the administrators, the logisticians, the public relations, the administrators, and they are known as the Blues, so-called because of the colour of their flying coveralls. There are a number of Blues here today at our public relations sent in the RAF village, so please pop along, have a, look, have a word with them, find out what they do in the Red Arrows as well as their wider role since they've joined the Royal Air Force. You now see Reds eight and nine in trail on the rest of formation to your left-hand side, slightly front, for one of the most popular, if not the most popular maneuver, the Red Arrows flyer. We've kept it in for this year. Get your cameras ready, it's the Tornado! The aboard call is made by Reds 9 as Red 8 and 9 roll around the rest of the formation, but watch for the colour change as Red 1 flies the team down the line. In that front section of aircraft, you may be able to see those aircraft are flying with their air brakes out. That's the small door at the base of the aircraft towards the rear. This has twofold effects. The first one being the pilots now fly it with a higher throttle setting. It thereby produces a hotter engine gas temperature and makes the smoke colours burn a lot more brightly. In addition to that, it disturbs the airflow outside the back of the aeroplane and makes that smoke billow a lot more fuller. And therefore, in certain manoeuvres in the display, we'll fly with this technique to enhance those particular manoeuvres. Reds 8 and 9 now join the rest of the formation. And of course, once I said earlier, it's our 60th anniversary, it's our Diamond Jubilee. So once the team coming in from the right-hand side, as we come to the end of the first half, this will be your last opportunity to capture the Red Arrows in that iconic Diamond 9 before we start the second half of the show. Sirs, moms, ladies and gentlemen, once again from the right, in our world famous Diamond Nine, it's the Red Arrows. As we go into the second half, you'll now see a manoeuvre not flown since 2003. This is the 5 4 split. As we go into the second half, we'll now break down to two distinctive sections. Going off to the right-hand side, you have Reds 1 through 5, known as Enid. Named after Enid Blyton's famous five from the children's books. 
Off to the left-hand side, red 6, 7, 8, 9, known as Hannah. Named after squadron leader Ray Hannah, one of the first members of the Red Arrows. He was the only team leader to lead the team for four years. He took the team from a seven ship to a nine ship and created our world famous Diamond Nine. Hannah from the left, Enid from the right for the five, four cross. your eye on Enid to the left-hand side. The Red Arrows were formed in 1964 with our first public display in 1965. We were actually formed from three display teams available at the time. It was the Red Pelicans, the Black Arrows and the Yellow Jacks. We took the Red from the Red Pelicans, the Arrows from the Black Arrows to give us our name, our name. and of course we took the aircraft from the Yellow Jacks. In tribute to that aircraft, Enid from the right flying the Nat. The Red Arrows flew the nap right the way up until 1979. In 1980, we took control of the Hawk T Mark 1, which is the aircraft that we fly today. And the Hawk is actually 50 years old this year. Extremely agile aircraft, extremely fun to fly, and all the pilots that have flown it absolutely love flying her. Look directly to your front. Eight to nine, roll with the red and the blue. Get your cameras early once again for the Hanna break. Hanna split. We have red seven and eight off to our left hand side. Red six and nine off to our right hand side. The rear section is led by Red Six, the synchro leader off to our right, trailing white. That's Flight Lieutenant Stuart Roberts. Stu is in his third and final year on the team. He's a former Typhoon pilot with both 11 and 12 squadron based at RAF Coningsby. Each pair will now dive down to only 100 feet above the airfield. They've got a closing speed of over 800 miles per hour. Sirs, moms, ladies and gentlemen, react. Get your cameras ready for the Hannah Pass. You have red eight and nine going vertical and red six and seven staying flat. Red six off to the left, red seven off to the right. Red seven is squad leader Tom Hansford, second year in the team, red three last year. He's a former Typhoon pilot, former qualified weapons instructor on the Typhoon, as the Synchro pair complete Cyclone. As the Synchro pair leave directly to our front, look to your far left-hand side and you can see Red 9 starting to run in. Red 9 is Flight Lieutenant Patrick Kershaw doing over 450 miles per hour. Paddy is in his third and final year on the team, a former Tornado GR4 pilot, former Typhoon pilot as he turns hard left to line up with Enid in the distance to complete the manoeuvre called the Goose. As Red 9 climbs up, smoking the red, white and blue, you can see Enid coming off to our left-hand side, smoking our famous red, white and blue. Of course, one of the roles of Red Arrow is to represent the Royal Air Force and the United Kingdom of Great Britain. And we do that by flying our red, white and blue through the skies. We're extremely proud to take the Union colours. We wear them on our chest. We have the Union flag on our tails. And of course, we have our famous red, white and blue flying across the UK, Europe and across the world. Look directly to your front and you'll look to see the synchro pair, red six leading, red seven in trail. 
The smoke comes on. Get your cameras ready for the world famous Synchro Heart. Look to your far top right hand corner, and you can see Red 8 coming in as Red 8 spears the heart. Red 8 is Flight Lieutenant Richard Walker. Rich is in his second year on the team, a former Harrier pilot, former Typhoon pilot, and former qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark II. Keep your eye on Red 6 and 7 once again as they dive down to only 100 feet. They'll have a clone speed of over 800 miles per hour. As they pass, they're only looking to miss each other by only 30 meters, that's 100 feet. They'll go unsighted for the last possible second as each pair completes the synchro opposition barrel roll. Synchro pair leave, look directly in the distance to your left hand side, you can see Enid running back in, the white smoke in trail. Once again, Red One pulls them up at over 450 miles per hour. He'll roll himself right, followed by the rest of the team. Once again, get your cameras ready for the Vixen vertical break. Keep looking to your left and keep looking to your right. Once again, you're looking for the synchro pair. This time you have red six from the left, red seven from the right. Once again, looking to pass each other in only 30 meters, meters each aircraft will conduct a 360 degree aileron roll. Pull, go, is the call from Red 6 as each aircraft now pull hard up, pulling about 5 to 6 G, which means everything about them is now weighing 5 to 6 times heavier than what you and I are as we stand on the airfield. They reach a height of over 3,000 feet, they'll be inverted 60 degrees nose down before rolling the correct way up to complete the manoeuvre called the boomerang. Pressure, pressure. As the synchro pair leave to our rear, look to your front right over the BAE systems hangar. And once again, you've got Enid running back in with the white smoke in trail. Red one once again pulls them up. The color goes on and Enid fly a barrel roll, leaving a snake-like smoke trail in the sky. For the first part of the maneuver, we like to call the serpent. And you can really see that red, white, and blue against the sky. Those colors only capable due to the smoke pod, which is under the belly of the aeroplane. That smoke pod is capable of producing approximately five minutes of white smoke, one minute of red smoke, and one minute of blue smoke. With each of those colors selected by its own individual button on the pilot's control column. And during winter training, we come up with a smoke plan to ensure we have the right color at the right time in the display and that we simply do not run out. Reds two, three, four, and five now moved up, looking 90 degrees along their shoulder line at red one while pulling up to 4G, an extremely hard formation to maintain. The smoke will come on from the right as we finish off the maneuver of the serpent with the tango present.
as Eni leave to your left. Keep looking to your far left-hand side. You've got Hannah running back in. Red six now inverted, easing up as he starts to push. Red six now conducting an inverted barrel roll, pushing up to negative 3G, working hard to make sure all that blood doesn't rush to his head. Well, red seven, eight and nine hold on in that barrel roll to complete the maneuver called the mirror roll. With the mirror roll completed with reds eight and nine performing a rollback. As Hannah leave to your right, look to your left hand side once again, you've got Enid running in. That's reds one through five, see their nose light twinkling in the distance and the white smoke is on. Two and three, roll go is the command from red one as reds two and three roll to the outside. Clear, go as reds four and five rolls around the outside in one of the hardest manoeuvres for our new pilots to master each year. This is rollbacks. The motto of the Red Arrows is a clat, which means excellence. And that means every single member of the team, from the officer commanding to the newest member who's joined the team, is striving for excellence in everything that we do. And we like to think that we leave the team in a better place from when we joined it. As Enid leaves to your right, look directly to your front. You'll have red six, seven, eight, and nine once again. As I said, 2024 celebrates our 60th display season and our 60th anniversary. As reds eight and nine draw a wonderful 60 in the sky for our 60th anniversary break. Red six and seven breaking underneath the 60. Keep an eye once again on the synchro pair. Red seven off to the left, red six off to the right. They'll pull up to approximately 1,000 feet for their final manoeuvre of the show. They'll dive down back towards the display line, back to that 100 feet, back to that 800 miles per hour closing speed. For their final manoeuvre of the show, this is the colourful and dynamic synchro double rolls. complete their double rolls look directly to your front with Enid running back in eight and nine for the vixen break sirs moms ladies and gentlemen royal international air tattoo it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure please put your hands together for the 2024 royal air force aerobatic team it's the red